Welcome to Bomber Country Podcast, a podcast about country, connection and community. Welcome everyone to Bomber Country. Uh, we've got a great guest uh, with us on the, the show today, uh, an old friend of mine, um, a great father, a great husband and, a, and actually a great businessman. So it's good to uh, welcome Ryan Gilbank. Thank you. Welcome to it's, Bomber Country. It's so good to be here uh, on, the, on the second or third episode, depending yeah, on yep. when it's airing. But yeah, it's um, it's been. I think the last time I saw you might have been a couple of years ago at Jordan Peterson, maybe. Oh my goodness! That was like two years ago. Is that the last in Brisbane? time we saw each other? I think so. Gee whiz! <laughs> time time yeah. goes by. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I know, so quick, eh? But how, how's things? How you been? What's yeah, been good. We're yep. we're entering um, well, this year. Jenny and I celebrated twenty six years of marriage. Wow, awesome! Congratulations. Um, our boys are twenty four. Thank you. Twenty four and twenty. They moved out of home last year. Although the eldest one uh, still has stuff in a certain room and seems to be there a lot, even yep. though he's renting somewhere else. But that's that new season uh-huh. as, a, as a couple. Um, you know, right. once the kids leave, and all of a sudden you. So you're what? You empty nesters, are you? Yeah, legally, I think. We're yeah, legally. Yep. Yeah, they still have keys to our house um, yep. and fridge. Well, and they know what side the and, bread's buttered on. Yeah, so they know. Oh, yeah. They know where yeah. to go. Yeah, they know where to come and get That's food good... <laughs> all the time. Um, whether we're there or not, yeah. the food disappears somehow. That's the way. So, well, you used to do it. Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> it's hard to judge. No. Nah. I know. I used to go straight into mum and dad's. Yeah. I still go yeah. into mum and dad's fridge. Oh, that's so, good. yeah. Yeah, it's no, been good. That's awesome. How are you guys? Good. Well, um, as you people probably haven't seen yet but there's a bottle over here um so yeah we like the count is done it's finalized that's amazing um but yeah it's it's been a really really steep learning curve i think it's just started actually yeah yep so the first six months you know well the six months into it it's just i think meeting the people meeting the community learning about what um what the issues are what people are really feeling in the community is so opening like when you don't have much to do with individuals in the community and you hear what their concerns are yeah it really makes you sit back and go well what what is actually going on in the council you know so i think even when we were running for council people are like i had people lining up for the ballot papers right go and yes. vote yes and i had a couple of guys actually come up and say so what's this I'm like, oh local elections they're like what's that for <laughs> so, uh council <laughs> Yeah, okay, I don't know. I'm just going to vote whatever anyway. So yeah. they walk in and so many invalid votes. Really? So many invalid votes. And that's, I think, you know, people, um, you know, they don't realise the, the, the importance of voting. Yeah. importance of having a informed decision, you know, having a say what goes on. So yes. Even if you're not happy with where things are at, that's yeah. the whole point of democracy is yeah, you can 100%. change that. Yeah, it's definitely. in your hands. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yep. And so, you know, I think if that's just learning those sorts of things as well about the community and I, just the drive. I think this, you look back over your life and you can sort of see how you came to be to this point. And it's all those things that shape you, even as you grow up, you know. But specifically for me, it's been around the work that I've been doing and seeing where um, I think a lot of the issues are in the community. And it makes you go, you know, I, I want to do some more. I want to do more. Yeah. I want to meet people in a in a greater way because you can when you're working in a in an area like we do in domestic violence there's, there's not a lot of um awareness number one but there's also a lot of stigma around it yeah so people sort of go oh, well it's domestic violence that's an institution problem mm. it's like no it's a people problem it's community problem yeah you know what i mean so it's it's so um it's so valid you know that people understand what it is not only what it is but how do you identify it yeah um and then what do you do about it mm. because you might have people that are from overseas right and they live a certain way in their life and it's normal yeah. where they come they from come. and they come to australia and it's like it's all it's just what we do at home you know yes so those sorts of things i think um you know especially working with people that are um from from other countries really make me think made me think um you know how do i reach those people just from a grassroots level yeah. you know i think that's what made it exciting mm. watching you know from the outside with you guys you and heath yes uh, 
I mean, I, over the years, when we talk about coming to a stage in a season where the kids are leaving home, etc., there's something of coming of age even for us to see friends. Yeah. And for the first time, really, for me, I've known of uh, certain people running for council or running for different uh, positions in the in government. But it's the first time I've actually went, I know these guys. I know their heart. This is huge. Now, not discounting what other, you know, who's come before and, and they probably had great hearts and, and have tried their best and done different things. But it's, it's, it's funny how it's different when it's people you know and you mm. know their intent and you know what they're, what they're after to do for the community, etc. Right. And so it made it more exciting to sort of go, this could actually be, bring change. Whereas yeah. before I have a, a, a bit of doubt because I don't know the people. Yeah. With your sales and going, man, and you are in, but before you've got in, thinking if they get in, the the wheel starts turning in a positive way. Yep. So it's, yep. yeah, it's exciting time. Yeah, definitely, man. <laughs> like you know, and, I, and that's 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 been one of the things too. I think is having a heart for the community, mm. which is I know one of the strengths of what you've you've shown mm. through not just not just um, your, your community or your church life or family, but also through your work. Mm. Um, Tell us a bit about um, how you got to be where you are. What, like, what's your what's your backstory? Yeah, so I was born. Uh, no, how far back? <laughs> yeah, how far back? <laughs> yeah, um, backstory. Uh, raised in Mackay, born and bred. Um, lived at Bukasia my whole whole. Bukasia. Bukasia. No, it's Bukasia. <laughs> uh, you'll know Bukasia Beach is actually the Gilbank Beach. Yep. Uh, that's oh, that's what we've claimed it as. Yeah. Um, so born and raised out there. Um, Mum and dad, obviously, that was where they set up their first home that they built and stayed there. Yeah. Uh, went to school here all through our schooling life. Um, went away for a couple of years and then moved back. So it was away for about four and a bit years yep. out of Mackay. Moved back in 2000 for the birth of our first son, uh, Michael. Uh, and then had our second son. Worked for, for a church there running the youth for about, must have been employed, I think full-time employed for about nine months and then we went to 50 percent wage because there was just some issues finance yep. wasn't coming in etc and then uh started working part-time at queensland transport um and was begging a mate of mine for an apprenticeship uh, mm. in a labor hire company that he was running where he had some diesel fitters running around and he wouldn't give me an apprenticeship as a as a diesel fitter uh which in retrospect i'm very happy he didn't <laughs> do uh these hands are not made for for that sort of stuff um but he did need someone to to be the the person that looks after his yeah. people and the clients uh so we started under him probably i don't know how many years that is 21 years ago now i think it is um he had six people walked with him through full growth of that up to five offices and 150 odd people around Australia and uh, went through the 2009 floods and GFC and all that in Mackay and that obviously reduced it down and helped it helped him rebuild again for about I know it was five or six years and then just felt like wife and I just felt like it was our season was done um, in in that regard uh, that the, the market was shifting uh, but my boys were at an age where you know just as they're coming into that teenage years our European culture or Aussie culture that's usually when the dad is hitting his straps with his business um, and not at home when the children are hitting an age where they actually need fatherly input more than ever Um, and so we wifey and I just decided it's not for us so we stepped out for two years um, because it was going to be busy again which i knew what that is that's been yeah, on the road yeah. four or five nights again a week um and it just wasn't going to suit our family so we just decided we'll we'll focus on other stuff i started doing some business coaching that was really successful in the first year i think we made it like 30 grand for the year <laughs> um, so that was like that was a shock um and then towards the end of i think it was 2015 i was in brisbane uh, we were looking at shift and we just felt like our season was was uh, finishing in Mackay, um, which was a huge shock to the system. But we were in Brisbane. I was talking to my mate who owned the, the business that we own now and he was pretty well done. And I tried to sell it for him and a guy I was selling it to, he said, oh, how come you're not buying it? And it had never crossed my mind. Um, I talked to, to Dan. Uh, he honoured us greatly in how we awesome. took a price of that, like for 50% of its value and that. 
and that was December 2015 and since then it's just been a roller coaster wow. um, in a good way yeah wow. so yeah that's where incredible yeah everything sort of shifts so so you said just to backtrack a bit <laughs> you, you you said back in on that 08 or 09 maybe was it the mm. GFC GFC, those sorts of things yeah, and the flood 100 um, year flood in and obviously the hardships and the ups and downs of of the business and the mining industry obviously around there was just probably going ape back then mm. um and you know like when you talk about the hard times in business what 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 are the things that that keep you that kept you grounded during those times like what what could well, you say contributed for, to that? for me obviously a big one uh is my my spiritual walk uh so having that peace in the middle of a storm that this is not the end there's there's always better um on the on the other side of that we i had good friends group um i'm, I'm probably a, a positive person at the best of times um something else that i think worked for us and and maybe it doesn't work for everyone but our decision to remain loyal uh when everyone else was jumping ship from the business that wasn't doing well our decision to stay and help work that through because I was part of that. Um, mm. So instead of just going, well, I'm cutting and running. Um, Which is what probably most people would do, right? And there's probably a lot of logic yeah. to it at times. Yeah, that's but right. we just, one of the things that Jenny and I have always found, and, and probably my dad spoke it into me, was to, you know, there's an old old scripture that talks about being found in peace on the day. Right. Um, and so we, we've always based a lot of our decisions where we're sitting down and what might look logical etc if we don't have peace with that decision then it doesn't matter how good it looks on paper how enticing it is we just don't we stay where peace is um in our spirit so to speak not peace as in there's no mm-hmm. waves but peace in our spirit where we're like yeah okay well this is what we're doing so so to get through those times uh in all honesty both dan and i thought we traveled through the gfc the his his um business crashing better than we actually did because in reality when we've looked back in the last four years at that seven years following that um we were on autopilot well wow. uh if i get a phone call from from someone that was a little bit angry it was like immediate P- ptsd if you want to call it not as bad obviously as people that have had like uh infantry experience but it's like I wouldn't want to answer the phone. I didn't want to make phone calls. I'd, I'd have moments where I sit still. I, I still remember uh, having to go out west one day um, and kids were, you know, there's a lot of pressure on at home. The business has got all these issues. And I remember getting down, uh, the car park was underneath our office, uh, starting the car and not not physically being able to put it in drive and just, just crying, just fear that you know when when all the emotion hits at once and not being able to actually move and just going what is going on mm. uh, and and you know what, what we used to joke about we'd do the google search and do the questionnaires on what depression is or yeah. what because we're, like, well, we're not depressed <laughs> and we'd be going through the list going well tick yeah, tick yeah. um but i think it's just that thing of if you don't feel like you can quit you don't quit mm. so that that helps as well you find a way to get through um and we were able to just uh, how would you say in the darkest moments breathe and just go this is not going to be the end right um, and, and do the little just keep doing the little things it's amazing you keep doing the right thing eventually it pays off yeah right. um, so yeah we, we had that privilege I suppose it sounds like you guys you know obviously your friendship's one thing yeah but it's the connection to the broader community also like you have you talk about peace but peace um in unison with community mm. you know what i mean like yeah. and that's because no, i've obviously for those who don't know i grew up with ryan so i we know like um to me that's what stands out yeah. a lot especially with your family mm. and not just your family but the people that is that are surrounded that you surround yourself with yeah talk talk to the importance of connection yeah it it's one of the things i thought everyone does right um so even even i suppose growing up in Mackay, one of the the best things that i found with growing up in Mackay was it was a melting pot of different cultures different different people uh to the point that until i was probably mid teenager i didn't actually realize there was an issue with any you know different races or backgrounds or any of that sort of stuff because we'd just been in this 
everyone was together. Like you, you're all, all your mates were, are everyone that you just want to hang out with. There was no confusion. There was no ill trust or any of that sort of stuff. And so for me, that, that has helped because I just go, well, that's normal. I, I'm friends with this person, right. that person. Um, by nature, I'm a, I'm prob- I've been told by my wife I'm a connector. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm wanting to be friends with people mm. and, and I genuinely value them. Right. Um, sometimes to my own detriment because I, I'll over trust or I'll over whatever, but I don't, I don't ever really want to lose that either. Yeah, sure. Um, because it's, I think that's a good way to operate. Is mm. where you can still have your heart open. You can still be friends with people. You're talking to people that are that um, from all different levels in society, all different backgrounds, and you're trying to find the gold in them and release them to their next next bit. Um, that helps you be friends. Yes. If, you're, if you're not looking for something from someone, um, I still remember in the middle of the, the downturn, uh, mm. so the mines had no work. And so it was as a salesperson, it's yeah. no good going out and going, hey, we need more work and just keep yeah. knocking on the door. Yeah. Uh, I remember my boss at the time, Dan, saying to me, do what you do. Go out and be their friend. They're worried about their job. Yeah, right. They've got issues at home with their spouse. Their kids are getting to that. Go out and, and do what you do and just be their friend. Um, and to be released into that as someone and just going, that's my, I want to see their, their marriage flourish. I want to see their mental health go well. You know, like in the downturn in Mackay, we had the second highest suicide rate in Australia uh, per, head, per capita. Um, that's deplorable. So it was like there was this urge on the inside to go, well, how do we get people through this dark side and then try and equip our people, whether they're working for, for us or whether they're working in our client with our clients, yeah. how, cause there'll always be another downturn. Mm. There's always a cycle in the, you know, in every, any life. Yeah. Um, so you guys were running a project or you had like a bus or something. Yeah, right? we had, we, so, so we started yeah. a, a charity, which is still running Sam, uh, so yep. suicide awareness, Mackay, um, the bus was bought literally. Well, it's just like a place for people to go. What yeah, was we we didn't. Re- you know, it's funny when you first when you're first doing stuff, everything's just like this is an idea. Yeah, Let's yeah, do yeah. it. Um, we we got the bus. Um, it was uh, Craig Lowndes' old team bus. Okay. It must have been the one he had. Well, wow. at some yeah. You say well, it wasn't flash. Oh, <laughs> well, it sounds. It was flash. old. <laughs> Let's put yeah, it that right way. Um, but it was very practical. We could pull it up anywhere. We could take it down and do yeah, right. you know, open days in Moranbar or Blackwater or at the junction at Nebo. Uh, you know, like at Christmas, we just set up. We got a couple of uh, uh, backpackers hired. We bought some coffee machines and we had it set up at the junction. Free coffee, free Red Bull, free water. Just encouraging people because there was a lot more people on the road back then. Now it's a lot of bus in, bus out, and FIFO and that sort of stuff. But trying to encourage people, hey, make it home for Christmas. Mm. If you want to have a chat to someone, you know, I spent a week there just at the bus every day, just saying hello to people, letting them as they're coming through. Just trying to be, you know, it's one of those ones. If you look at it as a big picture and you think you've got to do everything at once, you'll do nothing. Yeah. Um, and the, the oldest story in the, in the book you would have heard my dad talk about is the guy walking along, old fella, picking up little starfish as the right. tide's going out and throwing it in, throwing it back in the water. And his little grandson's with him going, what are you doing, granddad? And he's like, well, you know, the sun's getting high, the tide's going out, these little starfish, if you, if you don't put them in the water, the sun will cook them and they die. And the kid looks down the beach and there's like millions of these little starfish scattered on, on the beach and the tide's going out, which is revealing more and more of these starfish. And he's like, Granddad, this is this is a waste of time. It's not making any difference. You're not going to make any difference at all. And the granddad just stays quiet and his wisdom and his patience, kneels down, picks up one little starfish, throws it into the water and turns to his grandson and goes, it sure made a difference to him. And I, and I think that's yeah, the wow. part that I've, yeah. I've tried to go is because... Yeah, and you'd be the same. You yeah. see a massive need in community. If you try to fix everything and try to be everything, mm-hmm. it just gets you overwhelmed and yeah. you can't, what do you do? You, it's too, it's crippling. Yes. Um, but if you just start to be nice to the person that sits next to you, mm. if you hear like today, I uh, hear a story of a certain person that just, they're in a team, basketball team, uh, and they're the only kid that don't have some coin for some shoes. I go... Uh, well, let's get him some shoes. Yeah, it's like make a difference to that one person. Yeah. 
and and it, it helps your own spirit. It helps you keep your your heart good. You you're not able to judge people because you're helping. You know, it's like yeah, this, it's yeah, a different definitely. game. You hear yeah. stories. So you know, like that's that to me speaks about the commitment to community. But you know, you've carried that into the way that you do business, mm. um, the way that you do um, your connection with employees and networking. Yeah. Um, how important is it for local businesses to be engaged in community? Um, I think there's a responsibility that rests on us mm. um, to, to be, you know, the, the place that we're being fed from to actually seed back into. Um, otherwise, the tree dries up if you're not planting more seeds for the future. Yep. And so if you're finding your, you know, being blessed from a certain industry or region or area, I think it's hugely important. It's almost like a, a mandate. That's why you're getting having breakthrough in your business is to actually be able to help your local communities go further. You're employing local people. Yeah. So that, that in itself uh, is good because if you're looking after them and you're paying them well and you're giving them a good workspace, then hopefully they're not as stressed that when they go home and it has an impact on their spouse, it has an impact on their kids. And it's like, so as a business owner, that's got to be one of the forefronts in what we're doing. Right. Um, and why it's important is everything we're doing isn't just about we had a, a lady work for us for a few years, um, Andrea. It came in for a season for about three and a bit years. Great lady. And she challenged me on this one thing, and she said it was, which was great, because I've always looked at mining, you know, what we do. I go, how do, all we're yeah, doing do is do we're digging yeah. holes. That's all we're doing. We're going out to the mines, and we're digging holes. It's not rocket science. That we're not saving lives. Mm. Uh, and she challenged me, and she said, yeah, but you talk about it all the time. You, you're digging holes. It's not saving lives. She goes, but what if it could do both? And that shifted my whole headspace on, well, hang on, I'm resourced for a reason. So this digging a hole, yeah, I can't do anything with digging the hole, but the resources from that, I can release into another sure. area to help save lives. The the people that are helping dig those holes, if I'm helping them with their, their relationships, if I'm helping them uh, keep a work-life balance, if I can offer ways to then I'm actually helping save lives, so to speak. It might not be saving them from death, but it might be just saving them from their own depression or saving them from yeah. going broke or, or whatever. So that's that that helped me, I suppose. Yeah, sure. So young entrepreneurs um, out there, who maybe starting businesses. Yeah. I mean, you could probably talk to yourself, really, if you could have a conversation, as they say, with yourself from 10, 20 years ago, yeah. you would have a crazy conversation probably. Yeah. What invest advice in Apple? <laughs> invest in Apple. Yeah, what 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 would you what advice would you give to young entrepreneurs out there starting out in especially in the marketplace today and how things are? I think that's a great question because um, each person's slightly different in what their motivations for why they get into business. Um, I think the one thing that 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 irks me in the in a lot of this this space usually is that everyone's all about get the cash get the flash car uh conquer the world you know step on every person you can as you go uh and the one thing i've learned in, in my world and that i've seen lived and walked out sometimes to a terrible outcomes in other people's life is if they chase the money they'll get the money but it disappears mm. um money money literally they, they get to that level of money and it's not making them happy and they chase the next level of money and they want the they want to buy the new fleet of cars they do that and it's uh, they buy the next level uh, um, what I've learned is to chase legacy and the money follows and, and, and when we talk about legacy that's actually having something that has an ongoing impact that, that it's not about just well we're going to help pay the market more money it's about, well, when Namak is in our realm and he's working for us, we want to make sure that he's doing well, that, that you're still around for your wife and kids, that, that when you finish working for us, you go, this is the place that looked after me the best. They understood me. They, they went out of the way to help me. Mm. Uh, that legacy, the money flows because you're looking after people and every business is about people really. But it, 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 it's a side byproduct that actually increases the more you're focused on the legacy. Mm. Uh, whereas, yeah, if you're just focused on the cash, anyone can make money. Yeah. Look, look yeah. at the TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. People exactly. with no skills are making money. Yeah. But it disappears if you're not actually right. doing it for legacy. Yeah. Mm. Such an important lesson. Mm. So important.
Yeah. Thanks for your talk. Thanks for all your <laughs> time. Right. I'm going to stop really it there. Quickly. It went really quickly. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for watching, and uh, we'll see you again. Yeah. Thanks, brother. Day. Thanks for having me. Champion. Can you grab that really shiny bottle out of the... This bad boy? Yeah. Well, you don't have to use this in the podcast. And I know it's more of a, um, more of a gesture because I don't even know if anyone drinks. But I figured with the, with the amazing outcome of becoming counsellor, oh, yeah. I, I just figured Ooh. it's a great gift. <laughs> and so I'm just going to open it here and just... Pull out the camera. I'll put it here. Or do you want it out no, of no, shot? leave it there, leave bro. It there, leave bro. it there. Good, good, good. That's great. Thank you. I'll receive it yeah, from good. over there. <laughs> Sorry. I just hit the mic. Lovely. Boys.